Thank you. Good evening, and welcome to the meeting of the Board of Selectmen for um, Tuesday, December 4th, 2018. Previous to the meeting, the Board met in executive session to approve minutes to consider litigation strategy with respect to the petition of Eversource Energy for zoning exemptions, to consider the purchase, sale, lease, or value of real property in relation to open space preservation, center trail, town hall, the Main Street Corridor project, and an additional item, uh, TJA Solar versus the Planning Board appeal. This item was only um, received by the town today, so it was, um, the town could not reasonably anticipate this coming up before the agenda was published, which is why it's, uh, it's being added this evening. Um, so now we will call our meeting to order and begin by reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. Please rise. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And before we begin our meeting tonight, I would like to call and ask for, to ask for a moment of silence in honor and memory of the passing of our 41st President of the United States, President George Herbert Walker Bush. start tonight with our, our public session. Are there any members of the public who would like to come and speak to the board? Good evening, sir. Hi, how are you? Please tell us your name and address. Uh, Wade Marshall, 7 Appaloosa Circle. Uh, I'm also the race director for the Hopkin 10K. Uh, I just wanted to come and thank the board for their support. Uh, a few months ago when we applied for the permits, the parade permit and liquor permit, the race was held on Saturday and it was a great success. Um, weather cooperated, which is always iffy, a December road race. And as you know, as you remember, the race honors uh, Hopkinton, the honor of Hopkinton resident Andy Welzel, who passed away a few years back. Um, last year we had the race and we were able to give two scholarships to a couple of Hopkinton seniors. And uh, thanks to the board support and the town support, we can do that again this year. Um, it's the Pay It Forward Scholarship, and it honors uh, Andy's passion for coaching and mentoring. And so the applicants, we had 33 last year, uh, submitted uh, essays based on some mentor or somebody who influenced them at one point in their life. So thanks again, thanks to the town support, we'll be able to do this again next year. And uh, lastly, I did want to thank the EMTs and the police officers uh, who kept us safe uh, during the race. So really, it was just overall a really good success. So I did want to stop and just say thank you. Excellent. Thank you. I'm glad it thank was you. a good event. I know Sunday morning it was pouring rain, and I thought, yeah, oh, we had the race on today or yesterday. It was so Luckily, funny. the race was on Saturday, so it was nice and sunny. <laughs> Great. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Wade. It was a big success. Wade, it's nice when uh, when we approve permits or we do whatever. People generally like to come up beforehand or afterwards and kind of complain a little bit. It's not often that we get someone to come up and say thank you. We appreciate that the work that you did and things like that. So it's just nice like that having a town support, way. and it really, you know, it's a it's a great race. It's a great day for, you know, a lot of Hopkinton businesses were there. Uh, a Hopkinton resident uh, we're honoring, and it's Hopkinton students getting the scholarship. So yep. did want to come in and just thank the town for their support. Great, thank you, Wade. thank you, Wade. thank you, thank you. That's great. Anyone else? Don't be shy. Okay. Well, thank you. Um, next on the agenda, we have town manager appointments, and the town manager will recommend an affirmation vote of the Board of Selectmen on the following town manager appointments. Senior Services Director, Amy Beck. Chief Financial Officer, Timothy O'Leary and Network Systems Administrator, Jason Hill. 
Now, I know Mr. O'Leary is going to be joining us um, remotely in just a minute. Uh, Amy, is Amy here tonight? Amy's here. Mr. Kamalo. Yes. Um, Very well. <laughs> Through the chair, as Amy is setting up for um, her presentation tonight uh, by the town manager, I wanted to highlight a couple of things that I took from the hiring process for these three positions. Um, number one, when I spoke with the HR director, the hiring committee, uh, the community representatives, uh, they all assured me that the recommendations were for long-term hires. Uh, I, I think that's very important to, uh, to, to, to highlight uh, in the sense that, yes, we're filling positions, but we're also thinking long-term strategically for, for the community. Um, secondly, um, we had to do a creative balance uh, in terms of what the applicants offer uh, as well as what the town would offer as its support to ensure that the hires are successful. Uh, I, I thought it's important that I highlight these two uh, uh, issues up front. Amy, congratulations. I am tonight recommending you as the town senior services director, uh, taking up after Cindy Chesmo. Uh, as we may know, Amy has been with the town for six and a half years. We were also fortunate to have Amy act as the interim director in the last um, perhaps six to eight months. I can assure the board that you are coming before the board today because of three significant reasons. Number one, you worked hard uh, as the interim director, uh, moved key processes uh, forward, uh, and secondly, the support that you received from the community represent representatives as well as the staff was a game changer. Yeah, I, 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 I received uh, phone calls, emails from the community uh, recommending that you be hired for this position and you proved that during the interview process. Uh, and, and thirdly, uh, your commitment to this community uh, came out pretty clearly and strongly uh, during your, 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 your service as the interim director as well as uh, during the interview process. Uh, and so based on those three issues, I am recommending that the selectmen affirm you as the town's next senior services uh, director. Thank you. That's a great review. Um, I know we feel like we already know you, Amy. Uh, we're just really glad to, to have you rise to this position and also very appreciative that you rose to the need after Cindy's passing and, and filled in and picked up the mantle uh, and, and really have served us, us so well when, when we really needed that. Um, other board members uh, have questions or comments for Amy. Mr. Hurt. So I had an opportunity to meet with Amy and a couple, two other applicants uh, for the position uh, as it was kind of winding down. And um, the other two applicants were great candidates. So the process worked really well. We had an interim, an internal candidate. A lot of folks in the world say, oh, it's just gonna be that person and they're just gonna kind of go through the motions. It was not a motions process at all. Uh, the other two candidates were excellent candidates and Amy went through an awful lot herself and the process took a couple of months to get to where we are today. And uh, I thought it was a very thorough process. The other candidates were excellent. Amy is, was an excellent candidate, is an excellent candidate and will do a great job in this role. Uh, she knows the community well, and uh, I think she proved herself not only as an interim, but in her time here with Hopkinton over the years, and through this interview process and screening process. So uh, I'm, I think it's a great move for Hopkinton. I'm excited to see you sitting here tonight, Amy. Thank you. Great. Thank you. So Amy, <coughs> um, the fact that you have six years, six and a half years experience at this senior center uh, is, is certainly a, a feather in your cap. Uh, you worked under Cindy, who ran it very well. Uh, another feather in your cap. The fact that Mr. Kamala and Mr. Herr give you rave reviews on the interview process, it's another feather in your cap. But the people that are here, I'm apparently, I'm, I'm assuming that these people in the audience are here to support you. <laughs> uh, these are the people that are, have kind of, for years in Hopkins, and kind of stirred the drink, kind of kept Hopkins going and know the pulse of the town. And if... Um, it's great that these people who 
had an hour interview with you, with, said that you did a good job, but if these people out there came out, you now I know uh, probably at least half are already asleep at this time of night, uh, and they're staying up late to come up and, and, uh, and give the, you the thumbs up, then, then that means a lot too, to, to have the people that you work with come up and support you. Um, that to me is, uh, is a, a pretty uh, loud statement. So you have my vote. Thank you. Welcome aboard. Thank you. No offense, Mrs. Mackin. <laughs> <laughs> normally I'd say uh, that uh, you have big shoes to fill. You have no idea how, what it was like before, but with all the experience you have there, I see it as seamless and it's going to be it's a continuation of, of uh, great service from the senior center, a place that um, uh, my mother absolutely loved as soon as she moved into town and met the most wonderful people there. And uh, the senior center just meant so much to her and I just am so glad that you're able just to continue the, uh, the seamless transition. Great, Thanks thank you. Much. Thank you. I think the fact that you've uh, been there as an interim director speaks, speaks volumes. And the fact that uh, we have an audience here in support of you <laughs> certainly helps. But most important to me is my mom has been, has discovered the Senior Center and, um, and she's loving it. And she's always excited to go to a knitting class or to go teach paintings or something like that. So uh, I think um, we have a wonderful facility and I think uh, you've been doing a great job and coming recommended for by uh, Mr. Kamal and Mr. Herr, that, that speaks volumes, so welcome aboard. Thank you. Yes, that seamless transition and all the good work you've already done and all the support that you obviously have in the town speaks, speaks volumes, so we're really grateful that you can, you can move into this position. And uh, I've never had a chance to see your resume before. I was just looking through it. I have to say I was delighted to see that um, you did your undergraduate work at Principia. My uh, younger daughter was a graduate of the Prin Upper School in St. Louis, so I know the college very well and uh, speaks well for you too. So anyway, um, we're, very, we're very pleased. Um, I would request this evening an affirmative, a, a, um, let me say this right now, I request a motion to affirm the town manager's appointment of Amy Beck to the position of senior services director. So moved. moved. Second. Okay. Moved by Mr. Tedstone, seconded by Mr. Cattino. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed, that is unanimous. And thank you, Amy. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good luck. Thanks. Great. <laughs> you guys can applaud for her if you like. <laughs> <laughs> I think you got you got to give a speech now. You got to give a speech. <laughs> Great. All right. And all right. We are next to welcome remotely Mr. Timothy O'Leary, uh, who has been a candidate and selected to become our next Chief Financial Officer. Uh, Mr. Grissetti was going to link us in with Tim. He should be, uh, he should be Good evening. Here. Can you hear me? We can yeah. hear you. <laughs> yes. Fantastic. I have you with a very strong audio uh, problem, but the video is See you. Okay, good. Where's Where's Tim? <laughs> yeah. middle, middle right. I love yeah. your hairdo, Tim. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I got two computers, a phone, and uh, I should be watching you on cable TV too. I guess. Okay. Yeah. Well, well, Tim is uh, at the secure Los Alamos nuclear base. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, by By way of introduction, I want to say a few things about the next candidate. Uh, he's a recipient of numerous military awards and federal civilian performance awards. He was inducted into the Beta Gamma Sigma Academic Honor Society for Graduate Business Students. 
He was inducted into the Coast Guard Leadership Hall of Fame in 1996. One Coast Guard officer is inducted each year. Uh, he is a current Department of Energy Level 3 highest contracting officer representative. He's a certified government financial manager. He also is a certified public accountant. And he has written an article, Brian, you'll be impressed. He's written an article, uh, a co-written article entitled Improving Federal Costing for Better Decisions. Love it. Love it. <laughs> I am happy to recommend Tim O'Leary as the town's next CFO. And I had the honor of interviewing Tim. He has an extremely impressive resume. Uh, I am delighted and honored that he wants to come and serve Hopkinton. And uh, I, I'm just so pleased that, uh, that he's been selected because uh, I think we'll really have a great working relationship. And I'm, I'm really, really excited to have Tim come on board. So, Tim, um, I'm, I'm glad to see you again. Look forward to seeing more of you. You, you had my vote right from the start. <laughs> so um, I have other members. I had a chance to look over Tim's resume and have some comments or questions. Mr. Hur. So Tim is in New Mexico, is that correct? Is that where he, he is this evening? I believe so. You know, I'm getting a very strong echo. If you could ask uh, Ms. Wright to repeat the question. I would love to answer it. I can, I can have the question answered by the folks here locally, Tim. I'm good, thanks. Yes. So just to s simplify okay. this a little bit, I, yes. it's a little off. Uh, so he's in New Mexico. Does he live in New Mexico? Y yes, he does. And in fact, he was here last week uh, continuing his search for a home. Uh, and I believe he's close to finding one. Was Tim moving to Massachusetts prior to this job search? Or is this job search bringing him to Massachusetts? I would like I'm sorry, I'm getting a very strong echo and I can't make out the question. Yes. I, 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 I can answer that question. Off, turn off the, the volume on your TV and just listen to the, to the uh, phone. I, I have the computer off. I think somebody else is unmuted and I'm getting two or three cycles of audio. So, but I'm, I'm getting a pretty clear audio from the chair. Yes. Okay. I, I, I can answer that question. Okay, Mr. Kamalo's answering the question for you about whether you were already in Massachusetts or are planning to move here. Is that correct? Yep. Yeah, he's actually. Oh, yeah, he's, okay. Yeah, he's actually right. planning to move here. Um, what what has worked well for us is that uh, Tim is a family man. Uh, he has young kids who he strongly believes need to be back in Massachusetts for their education. And therefore, this offer by Hopkinton comes at the appropriate time for him. Excellent. Thank you very much. Mr. Shedstone, you good? Yep. Mr. Contino. Yeah, I, yeah I'm, just, I'm just very impressed. My father was a Coastie. He was um, uh, back in World War II. And I have the utmost respect for anybody that was in the US Coast Guard, especially somebody at, uh, at your level. So thank you very much for joining us. It's, uh, it's going to be great to have you on board. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. I'm very excited about coming. My family is very excited. Uh, we think this is just a great opportunity for us and a great professional opportunity for me. Thank you. Mr. Nazrula, anything? Real briefly, um, I, I took a look at the resume and I'm, I'm blown away. Yeah. Um, really, really <laughs> impressed. I uh, kind of ask myself, you know, really, you want to come to Hopkinton? <laughs> 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 but uh, I'm glad to have you here. And as a fellow UMass grad, uh, I'd like to see us representing. So welcome aboard and uh, happy to have you. What? Thank you very much. You know, I have to tell you how impressed I was with the whole staff through the interview process. Really, interviews are a two-way street, and I'm just so excited about joining the team. Uh, it's very well-led, and you just have some tremendous staff there. I'm very happy to be coming on board. Well, Tim, we're excited to have you, and you're going to be a very important part of our team. And so I do hope that when you actually get here in the flesh, we'll be able to maybe schedule just a short piece at one of our upcoming meetings to have you come here in person um, so everyone will get to meet you and not, 
not just have a face on the screen, but at the time, uh, we're, we're, we're delighted that you could be with us remotely and um, are, are delighted to have you join our team. So if the board has no further questions, I will request a motion to affirm the town manager's appointment of Mr. Timothy O'Leary to the position of Chief Financial Officer. So moved. Second. Moved by Mr. Cotino and seconded by Mr. Herr. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 And opposed? That is unanimous. Congratulations, Tim. We can't wait to have you here. Thank you. Thank you very much. I look forward to meeting with you too. I look forward to welcoming you. Thank you. Thank you. And, and in fact, as the next candidate is setting up, I think we now understand why we really need him. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I am happy to recommend Jason J. Hill uh, as the town's first network systems administrator. Uh, he comes to the town with 16 years of experience working for Middlesex Savings Bank, uh, holds a bachelor's degree in business administration as well as a certificate in information technology. Uh, he has a long list of uh, computer-related certifications, uh, including Microsoft Certified Systems Engineer, specializing in uh, MSG, VMware, Virtual Certified Professional, uh, CompTIA A+, Network+, and Security+. Uh, the individuals we spoke to relative to what you could do for Community Hopkinton told us the following, uh, that you are a very quick study, you are flexible, uh, you'll adapt quickly to the local government setting. Uh, your customer service is top notch. Um, you are a trusted employee, often interacting with branch or regional bank managers. Uh, and in fact, uh, the committee that recommended you to the town manager highlighted the fact that your customer service working in a bank is exactly what we're looking for here in Hopkinton. Um, you uh, perform extremely well under pressure, and I think we. <laughs> we've, already, we've already proven that. Uh, you're highly productive, you have excellent judgment and decision-making skills. Uh, your professionalism, professionalism is very important to you, and that's what we're looking for in this role. Uh, you, your manager noted that he's very sad to see you uh, leave. Uh, I can tell the community that, uh, given what you've already worked on here, we're excited to have you on board. <laughs> Great. Well, welcome, Jason. Thank you. Um, I can't even begin to ask you any intelligent questions. <laughs> <laughs> I looked over your resume. I didn't even understand it. So <laughs> but all I, what I do understand is all the wonderful accolades that Mr. Kamalo just listed. And uh, those are all things we need. And his judgment is superb. And if that's what you're going to bring to town, I couldn't be happier. Thank you. So we're, we're delighted. We're delighted. I know we need, we need this position to very, very much. So thank you. Mr. Herr. Um, I think this is a great position for the town. It's a position that we need now. The world has evolved. We need to evolve. And we are evolving as a community in many ways. So I'm glad to see that this is being filled. I think you're a perfect fit from what I see. And obviously referring and relying on our colleagues here to, to make good, sound decisions. But I don't see any reason why this isn't going to be great for Hopkinton and for yourself. Uh, I'm going to ask a couple of business questions, so please bear with me. This has nothing to do with you. Mr. Kamala, this was budgeted in the FY19 budget, correct? Yes. Um, in fact, the position is a new position approved at town meeting uh, in May. I knew that, but I wanted to ask that, so you gave that answer so everybody heard. We're not creating positions and adding staff without town meeting approval. Town meeting runs the show. We help out in between. Uh, and then the extra money for the budgeted position that was only being filled halfway through the year, what will, how will that play out? Or is there extra funding? <laughs> we, we may not know until we get to the end of the year. On the position or? In terms of if we have extra money or not. Because it was by department, right? Correct. Okay, that's fair. Okay, I understand. Okay, good. I'm all set. I think it's great, and I'm excited to see the position filled, and we're going to bring ourselves up to kind of modern times here. Thank you. Thank you. Ted String, you good? Yep. Well, the world, the world runs on information, 
and access to the information. And one of the um, issues that, that we've always had is, is <clears throat> transparency. And people want to know what's happening in the town, when it's happening, how it's happening, and how they can get access to it quickly. And one of the things that we just did was, was uh, update the website to make it uh, easier to use, easier access. And it's, it's actually taken me a little while to, to get used to it, it's a little bit different. Um, but uh, you know, it's it's been great to have you on board, you know, to keep up with this with, with this uh, you know ever changing environment that uh, people like uh, Google, Facebook, and Amazon keep changing. <laughs> people want stuff; they want it immediately and delivered by drones. Um, so, uh, no, I just really appreciate you. You've got a great background, as as uh, Mr. Uh, Kamalo and uh, Mr. Hurd noted. You know, uh, with the, in the banking industry. So that's high security, and, and, and as much as we're a small town, we, we do have a, over a $90 million budget, and, and this stuff really ha does have to be secure. The, the, you'll, you'll notice that um, municipal stuff happens a little differently than, than, in, the, than in the outside world, but uh, if you could bring, a, a, a help work with Mr. Kamalo and actually bring some of that uh, uh, business community aspect of the town and, and help him with the community service, because. Uh, that's the one thing that, that since Mr. Kamala has been here, is community is the is customer service, and uh, and I know that you'll do a lot to to uh, increase that. Thank you very much. Thank you. So I also reviewed your uh, your resume and didn't understand any of it. <laughs> so. But I'm not the only one. I feel better. <laughs> <laughs> My kids make fun of me all the time for not getting technology, but you know. It, as a user of technology, the only time I understand that uh, there's, you know, when I can really comment on it is when it doesn't work. <laughs> so, you know, I think that there's a lot going on behind the scenes that I just don't really grasp, but I just certainly enjoy that user experience. So, as long as you can keep that going, um, I think uh, I think we'll be in good hands. And I and from what I've seen with uh, <laughs> with our experiences last week, um, I think I think we're in good shape. So, thank you. We're delighted to have you, and I hope you'll be patient with me. Josh always is, and I'm sure he's glad to have the, the extra support and backup. So thank you very much for coming on board. Um, to make this official, I need to request a motion to affirm the town manager's appointment of Jason Hill to the position of Network Systems Administrator. So moved. Second. Moved by Mr. Hur and seconded by Mr. Catino. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 And opposed? That is unanimous. Welcome aboard. Thank you. Thank Looking you, too. Good. good luck, Jason. Glad to have you. Thank you. <laughs> Through the chair, as we're getting ready to move on, I want to thank uh, 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 Maria Casey as well as the HR team for uh, continuing to bring us uh, premier talent uh, to this community. Absolutely. Thank you, Maria, as always. As always. Great. Okay. Um, we have our consent agenda next, and there are two, two items. Two items on the consent agenda. Um, the first is the board minutes. Um, the Board of Selectmen will consider approving the November 27, 2018 Board of Selectmen Minutes. And item two, uh, from Faith Community Church Global 6K for Water, a parade permit. The Board of Selectmen will consider approving a parade permit for Joshua Morrison on behalf of Faith Community Church for its annual Global 6K for Water to be held on May 4th, 2019 at 9 a.m., beginning and ending at Faith Community Church. Expected number of participants is 750. Um, would someone like to pull one of these out for individual discussion? Excuse me, Claire. The uh, parade permit has been postponed to the next meeting. Oh, okay, good, because I wanted, I didn't think, <laughs> I had some questions on it. Okay, so it's just the approval of the minutes from November 27th. So um, moved. So moved. Second. All right, moved and seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 And opposed, that is unanimous. Okay. Excellent. Moving on. 
the South Asian Circle of Hopkinton. Uh, the South Asian Circle of Hopkinton will introduce this mission to the Board of Selectmen and community. Welcome. We're glad to have you. Tell us about you. Good evening, everyone. Hello. So, um, um, I'm Meena Kaushik, and this is uh, Charu Smita Ram. And today we are here to tell you about a new nonprofit that we have formed in, in the town of Hopkinton. It's called the South Asian Circle of Hopkinton. Um, so we, um, this organization has been formed to, uh, to, to make sure that we are, um, we are showcasing the talent and the culture of the South Asian community, and we want to also give back to the larger community of Hopkinton. So the South Asian community has a lot of talent, a lot of resources, and we want to utilize that and, and run programs that benefit the schools, the senior centers, <coughs> and, and also um, anything that, can, that we can do to enrich the arts, art scene and the music scene um, in the town. So um, with that, we are looking to the Board of Selectmen to help us, uh, give us some ideas about whom we can partner with in, in the um, town, uh, different organizations, and also to sort of give us more visibility. And, and Smita here will share a little bit. So we've been, we've been in existence only for about three months. Mm -hmm. And um, in that time, we have done a lot. So Smita will give us a, a, a tour of what um, events we organized and what we have done yeah. so far. Hi. Um, so we are about three months old. We were established in September of uh, 2018. So very new, but we've done quite a few events. Uh, we did a, a chai on the common uh, we, uh, as part of the farmer's market uh, on the common, so we sold chai and samosas and uh, you know cookies, and uh, there was a lot of interest within like the first one and a half hours. We we were sold out, and you know we we got contacts from a lot of the community. They loved they loved it, and they also invited us for uh, the farmers market, the winter farmers market at in Western Nursery. So we'll be there as well. And then the second event we did where uh, was. Uh, one uh, info social with eHop where we got the community together and we had like an informal civic education about the town government. Uh, Connor Deacon was also there and he kind of gave us a town government 101. Because a lot of us, you know, we, uh, as immigrants, we are sort of, you know, still learning and uh, we deeply love the town and we, you know, care about the town issues, so we wanted to be better informed. Uh, and educated, so that was a really good event, and EHOP e has been helping us with that. They, they're a great resource for the town. Um, and uh, last uh, uh, weekend on Saturday, we had a Diwali Gala, and uh, uh, Selectman uh, Nasrullah was also there. Uh, thank you for your support, and it was a, a, a large event. We had about 200 people at the Holliston Town Hall. And uh, we are hoping to, you know, keep the momentum going and uh, organize more cultural events like, like this, and kind of really get the whole town involved, um, and and you know have the town celebrate uh, with us. Um, Isn't there another something coming up in December, like December twenty first or something? I saw some other a Diwali uh, event. Is that the event at the library? Um, there oh. was one event at the library that. Yeah, but I don't think we, it's we us. Are not, we are yeah. not a uh, part of that. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think we will be going to find out uh, more about yeah, that. Yeah, we will definitely attend that to yeah. find out more. Uh -huh. Yeah, so that's us. And uh, we'd love your help and support in kind of just spreading the word and mm -hmm. involving us where, we, where you think we, our help might be needed. Excellent. So yeah, the, the diversity committee or the cultural uh, committee, we would like to partner with them to to bring the South Asian perspective also. Mm -hmm. So we would like your help on that. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm sure that the town and our facilities would be, you know, happy to reach out or, or provide connections depending on what it is that you, you know, want to do, whether it's connections with the schools or things with the senior center or the diversity club or, um, you know, I think first thing is just, just ask, give us a sense of what you had in mind and, you know, then we'll have a sense of where your connections maybe could be, but um, I, I think it's great. Um, you know, we know that the the new legacy development has a heavy 
concentration of South Asian families. Um, and, and I think, you know, it's just wonderful. They've got their whole sort of community, but at the same time, it's really great if there are ways that we can make sure that there isn't, you know, a separate sort of an enclave, that there are opportunities for, for everyone to get to know each other and become, become part of both communities. We always talk about One Hopkinton, um, you know, down, down to the point that even as the developments were built, we've been adamant about there not being permanent development names, but when the development's done, it just have a street name because we're all the same town. We're not, we live in Legacy or we live in Ravenwood or whatever. So um, that, that goal of, you know, making sure that we all are one community in every way we can, I think, is, is a wonderful thing. And so we're really glad that you very quickly didn't waste any time <laughs> to, get, to get organized. And, uh, no, and that's the whole idea is that we want to, we want to not just, uh, you know, be as a South Asian community and celebrate within us, but we want to include everyone and we want to learn from you and we, we want to, we want to um, create awareness and have everyone included in our celebrations and uh, bring a whole new perspective. Also, there's a lot of technical talent resources in the South Asian community, and we want to use that for schools, uh, for different programs. It could be after school or even, um, you know, college resources, things like that, and, and um, you know, cultural programs, any way that we can enrich even the senior citizen or the assisted living community. So, yeah, it's absolutely giving back is one of the top uh, missions for us. I think I think it's great, but I don't mean to hog the hog the discussion here. Other members have questions or comments, or we're glad Did you've you, been uh, here. Oh, good. I was going to ask you oh, about yeah. this. Yeah, I got some of the, the oh, answer, okay. good literature on, there you go. that I got on at, uh, Sunday at uh, Shopping for a Cause. They had a, Thank you. a table. Oh, God. I was, I thought Thank you. Thank you. Food again too. Ah. <laughs> ah, no food ah, this yeah, time. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> Thank great. You great. Yes, that was, that was great. Yeah, so I got, I got a preview for, for uh, today's... Uh, thank, you okay, thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, I'm not... Can we have a couple of questions? A couple Don't, more dialogue? I have a couple of questions. Don't go away. Could. Come back. <laughs> um, You're not done yet. <laughs> oh, okay. This is a quick comment. Like, I think we should figure out how we do the dialogue thing at the board. We'll work on that separately. But... Um, a couple of thoughts and ideas, if I could, please. Um, one, I'm, I'm a son of immigrants. My mom and dad are from Ireland, and I, I love immigration in America, and I know there's all kinds of st talk about immigration in America and all this stuff around immigration in America. I'm the product of it, directly the product of it, and I love it, and I love the diversity that's happening in Hopkinton. I think it's fantastic. And a lot of people in Hopkinton stand with me and believe that strongly. The residents of Hopkinton, many, many residents of Hopkinton, love the fact that we are diversifying as a community and we want you to be welcome here. This organization, any other organization that comes to Hopkinton, we love it and I, I really am so excited you're doing this, but I'm really excited about the idea of the diversity happening in Hopkinton, uh, in Massachusetts and across America. I get that it can be a little bit intense at times for various reasons, but at the end of the day, we are a country of immigrants, and I'm thrilled that you're here tonight, and I'm thrilled that you guys are putting this together. So well done. Uh, with that, a couple of questions to help along the process here. Did you guys go and become a 501c3? We are in the process okay, of so you're a nonprofit, Good. official functioning entity within the state. That's great. That helps the cause a little bit. Um, the facilities of Hopkinton are available to all Hopkinton residents. So we have a library with meeting rooms, and we have a senior center with meeting rooms, and we have other facilities. We got the schools that have rooms. So feel free to reach out. There's rules and regulations around those that we all put in place when we put these things uh, uh, online. Um, but those, uh, those facilities would be accessible to your organizations of 501c3 here in Hopkinton, like any other organization. So reach out and figure that out. Uh, I saw you sitting here earlier with Ms. Wigan. And I assume you guys know each other and she's kind of helping along the way. Yeah. So you asked who you should know to figure out Hopkinton. That's who you <laughs> should know to figure out Hopkinton right there. Uh, she can help you and direct you to all the sort of key players and the key individuals that help sort of facilitate all kinds of different discussion in town. And, and 
you know, there's, there's going to be a lot of opportunities to do different things. Some, some situations may arise that may not be ideal, and she can help you figure out what those situations are too. Um, but I think, in general, I think this is a great opportunity, and I'm really excited you came tonight, and I'm really excited uh, for the organization and for Hopkinton as, whole, as a whole. Thank you. Thank you. Stone. So, uh, welcome, uh, welcome to Hopkinton, and uh, thank you again. Congratulations for, for starting. How do you say it? Satch. Such, yes. Satch. Okay. Um, so, <clears throat> being someone who grew up in Hopkinton for many generations, I can tell you that this, if you brought this to us 20 years ago, 10, 15, 20 years ago, people would say like, what, what is this all about? South Asian? That's Chinese food. <laughs> and uh, it's, it's amazing with the population that's come into town, how eye-opening it is, um, the, your culture, <clears throat> your work ethic, you know, like there's just, it, it really is amazing. Um, and I have a, my, my direct next door neighbor is a physician from India and we, She's got me eating samosas, and I got her eating mac and cheese. So it's, <laughs> it's, uh, it's, a, it's one hand washes the other, and uh, it's a, it's it has the potential to be a very good, uh, enriching relationship, and uh, and you know, hopefully this thing will uh, this thing will grow and prosper, and and uh, we'll go from there. Thank you. Thank you. So. We had a wonderful time at the Diwali uh, celebration last weekend. It was fabulous. Um, I am thrilled to see that, uh, that you guys have come along and started organizing with the intent of being involved in the town. Um, I grew up in, in Holliston and moved to Hopkinton early on. And, you know, there was never such thing as diversity. It never really occurred to me that I was diverse, <laughs> adding diversity. Um, because there are so few Asians here. And as the community has grown, the South Asian community has grown, I've noticed that in many cases it becomes an enclave. And I think integration into the broader community is critical um, because my experience is very different from a lot of other you know, new immigrants' experience. Um, and that's, I was fully involved and I think that's something that needs to occur. And I think, uh, I think it's fabulous that you're making that push. Um, as far as what we can do to help, I'm always available. All you need to do is reach out. Um, I think food is always a fabulous way of, of getting people involved. <laughs> because uh, just a quick little story, when I first went to, uh, went to college, I, my mother would bring me food and I'd heat it up in the microwave, and then everyone in the dorm would be saying, ugh, what's that smell? Well, <laughs> by the end of the year, they're all like, oh, Rafan's making food. <laughs> Let's go get some. <laughs> so uh, I think anything we can do with food would be fabulous. Thank you. Y'all set? Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I went no. right into the beginning. You went right, right. into yeah. no, we're, we're delighted that you're here. And uh, you know, to Mr. Hurst's point again, as you understand, that's one thing that's so unique about America is we're, I mean, everybody came from somewhere. You know, we all did, my, my family, my mom's family came from French Canada and my dad's family came from Lithuania for a better life. And you know, we're just, we're all Americans. So immigration is what this country's all about. And uh, but I just think it's great, if, you know, these efforts in particular, where you know there is such a concentration of South Asians now in one part, that you're making this effort to, you know, create opportunities and avenues um, to make sure that you know we we all we all get to know each other, and you're all a part of Hopkinton, which which you are. So, so do reach out, contact the town manager's office for starts for for directions on where to go and when you know when you could use some help and. We're just very delighted that not only you put this together, but you came here tonight and took the time to explain and tell us a little about yourselves. Thank you. I, I saw the sticker Hop Kinton today, and I'm feeling it today. <laughs> good, good. That's, great. That's what you. we want. <laughs> Thank you. Well, that was great. I'm glad we had that opportunity. 
Uh, Heather Bathman Hopkinton Public Library update is next, and Heather will provide an update on the first year in the new building. Heather, tell us the good so, news. Good evening. Good evening. Heather's got meeting rooms and so people can Heather's go in. Heather's yeah. got meeting. Well, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about the, the South Asian Circle of Hopkinton and our meeting rooms, actually. Um, we were and by grateful the way, for you last, last week when there was no power and Town Hall became the yes, library. Yes, and, and you know, it was so funny when Town Hall flooded and we were still in the temporary space. I was sitting there thinking, if only we were open and yeah. then... Not that I would wish any more disasters on this building, but it was really nice that we could I think be Heather wants Norman's job. That's my <laughs> <laughs> Heather is very happy to let Norman have Norman's job. She used to fill there. And, and by the way, a glimpse of Indian culture. <laughs> a glimpse of Indian culture, Saturday the 22nd at noon. That's and what I was thinking I believe about. That's a, um, I believe that's a resident-initiated program, but it must be a different group of residents. 22nd. So, yeah. Yes. Yeah, I hope you stop by if you get the chance. Um, so yes, thank you very much for the opportunity to speak to you tonight. And um, you know, the agenda says I want to provide you with an update on the library's first year. There's really much more to say that I could tell you in 10, 15 minutes. So what I wanted to share with you in particular tonight is how the library is transforming Hopkinton by giving residents a chance to engage with each other, with each other excuse me, and with their town. Um, as you probably remember, we celebrated one year in the renovated building on October 27 of this year, and it has been an extraordinary year for us. The Massachusetts Board of Library Commissioners predicts that a library will experience a 30% increase in use after a construction project. On average, looking at our statistics and our numbers, library use in Hopkinton has doubled after our construction project. Um, so it's wonderful, we're so busy. And what I wanted to talk to you tonight about is what it really means for the community, for the library to be so well used. And we are now truly a community center. So in our first year open, we hosted 170 outside group meetings in our event rooms. Um, and to give you an example of what this means for one of those groups, uh, Ruta and her friends wanted to find a way to celebrate their South Asian culture and heritage and share that with the town and finding a good place to meet and get organized was challenging for them. There are spaces in town that groups can use, but they charge to be used. Coffee shops are noisy. They try to meet at home. Kids, parents, spouses, pets, all underfoot. Um, and then they discovered that the library has community meeting rooms that community groups can use at no charge. And they began meeting regularly in the conference room at the library. And with a quiet space, secluded from distractions, comfortable and welcoming, they really started to get things done. And you have, in fact, five minutes ago, just seen the results of that. Um, now we have the South Asian Circle of Hopkins. We're so thrilled to have been a little bit of, of your launch, and I hope we can keep working together. Um, the library is a launch pad for local groups seeking to contribute to their community. And we are also a platform for individuals who want to contribute. Many of the 330 events that we sponsored in the last year in the new building were instigated and run by Hopkinton residents. So to give you a few examples, for adults, we now have a book club co-sponsored by the Hopkinton Diversity and Cultural Alliance. We had a local resident run some discussions on climate change. A group of high schoolers put together a girls' empowerment workshop for other teenagers. And teens have been really active in our children's room. We've had high school students coming in running science and technology programs, magic shows for the younger kids, and really engaging with them in this really fun way. So the library is building a more connected community by engage, enabling residents of all ages to share their passions with friends and neighbors. And our Memory Cafe, which we offer in partnership with the Senior Center and other local groups, is another great example of this kind of resident-initiated programming. And I have to give a shout out to Pat Sardawa, who has done just an astounding job uh, putting it together and keeping it running. The Memory Cafe is a monthly group, and it meets to provide a welcoming space for adults who are living with memory loss or dementia and their caregivers to socialize, enjoy light refreshments, um, engage with some art or some music, and just sort of get out of the house. And it is one of the absolute highlights of my month, every month, to walk by that event room when this is going on and look in and see two dozen people dancing, singing, making music, creating artwork, or just having a good time in the company of others out in the community. This event enables people who are really at profound risk of becoming isolated 
to gather with other people in their community and reconnect. The library is enriching residents' lives by providing a space open and welcoming to every person, where people can rub shoulders with people who hail from all walks of life and all parts of the community. So in short, the library is transforming lives. It's transforming our community. And it's hard to put a number on that. So much of what a good library does is qualitative, not quantitative, but I've tried. So based on the level of use in our first year in the new building, based on the resources and the services we provided, I estimate the library provided over $3 million in value to the town in that first year open. Our FY19 appropriation is $548,000. So what that represents is a return of approximately $5.50 for every single dollar that the town invests in this library. And we are a smart investment. We are a vital driver for community engagement and transformation. We are a place and a platform where community members engage with each other and with their town, where they can share their interests and their passions, where they can launch new initiatives, and where they can build those relationships that form the bedrock of a strong, vibrant, and resilient community. And our town, our state, and our country are in absolute need of organizations and spaces that play that role. So it's been, I would say, a very successful year for us in this new building. And as always, you know, we are so grateful to the community for their support. As always, I have to express how appreciative I am of the staff um, who are so talented and so dedicated and without whom none of this would really be possible. Um, it is a privilege to work with them. The town is very lucky to have them. And looking forward, we've been very successful. We are not resting on our laurels. We are always seeking to do more for this community. So we received funding in the FY19 budget that enabled us to open on Saturdays in the summer for the first time. That happened last summer. That funding is also, in early 2019, going to enable us to add evening hours to the library. We will be open until 9 p.m. Monday through Thursday. And shortly after that, it's going to enable us to add Sunday afternoons to our schedule. We're also working on our next strategic plan to make sure that what we do continues to be responsive to and supportive of the community. We received a truly tremendous amount of feedback this summer when we did a survey and some focus groups, and we are still sifting through that, trying to pick out the themes and trying to then address how we are going to respond to what we heard. But I hope to be back here sometime in the next few months to share the outcome of that process with you. So it's an exciting time, um, and like I said, what I've shared today is the barest fraction of what's going on. There is so much happening. Um, it's a really exciting and vibrant place over there right now. I appreciate the opportunity to come and share a little bit with you tonight, and I hope that you stop by, you follow us online, and, and keep your eye out on what we're doing, because it's really a lot of things going on. Thank you. Well, thank you. We, uh, I think everyone shares your enthusiasm, and it's just... Uh, it's kind of funny when I think back in the earlier discussions that no one's using libraries anymore and libraries are going the way of the buggy, you know, the horse and buggy and all the rest and you see the amount of enthusiasm and activity that it's brought and it's also, um, you know, just just become a real anchor for the downtown. We're all concerned about downtown vitality and, and revitalization and it's just, it's just kind of the center focus point for the downtown. Every time you go in, it's just, filled with people and light and activity and uh, not an old fashioned, you know, shh, be quiet kind of a, a although those spaces are there too. Uh, you, you've just done, uh, and, and a lot of that uh, success uh, comes back to you, to the director who's brought your enthusiasm and vision and, uh, and vitality. And uh, I think, I don't think there's a person in this town that isn't, isn't really proud of, of that, of our beautiful new library. And, what it's brought to the town, so oh, thank you. Yeah. great report. <laughs> and other members, I start at that end of the table. How about I go to this end of the table for a change? <laughs> Fun. Um, you know, when I moved here in 81, <clears throat> I would uh, go to the library to study, and it was this, this small stone building, and uh, it's such a contrast with what I see now. And each time I go in, I'm, I'm more and more impressed. I think uh, I think you've done a fabulous job in, in kind of running the show there, um, and this the availability of everything that we have is uh, is is amazing. Um, 
glad to see that my son is actually using it now. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> instead of saying, hey, Dad, can I buy this on Amazon? He's like, how about we go to the, go to the library first? <laughs> oh, that's good. <laughs> Warms my heart. <laughs> so uh, I think it's fabulous. And um, I look forward to the day when he goes to study in the library as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it truly is a crown jewel. And that's what we wanted it when we were looking at the funding for it and at town meeting we were talking about it. It was supposed to be the crown jewel, the, the as you said, the, um, the center of uh, the community center. And it truly is turning out to be that. And, and one doesn't even need the, the, the quantitative um, analysis. All one has to do is actually go into the library at any time that it's open. And that's one of the things that my, that's my, my next point is that um, in order for it to, to reach its full potential, we really need to have it open as many hours as possible. And that's, you know, it, it gets to be a, you know, a, a, a tug of war with the, with the budgets and, and how much money to put towards it. <laughs> but when we're getting such a return on, on, on the on our investment, it's, it's, it's truly worth it. You know, getting the Sunday hours is just going to be great for, all the, for, for the kids in school to be able to get out of their houses and, and, and get in there and do some study and get into a carol and such um, to, and, and utilize the resources. You know, and, and, and to have the vibrancy there, it'll, it'll, it'll trickle down and, and bring, the, bring some vibrancy to the, uh, to the businesses in the area and, and, uh, and the chamber. So I just truly appreciate this, what you've done in this first year. It's just great. I love going in there every time and, and, and walking through with you. It's, uh, thank you very, very much. Thank you. So <clears throat> um, I'll echo everybody's sentiments on that. Um, the only thing that we've found with the, personally with the library is when we take the, the kids to the library, once in a while, like on Thanksgiving weekend, mm -hmm. uh, it wasn't open. And um, it's great to see that you're expanding your hours till 9 p.m. Um, you know, for, for those who work full time and kind of split schedules and sometimes husbands and wives work a little bit different hours and um, so you being open till nine will be uh, will be great it'll take care of any of those issues but you know um, much like uh, Mr. Nasrullah uh, 1981 um, I told my mother I was going to the library to study, <laughs> but what I did was I went to Pizza Villa and played Pac-Man. Uh, because the library wasn't that inviting. Now it's inviting. Now they will not go to Pizza Villa and play Pac-Man. So, uh, but I think it's a, it's a wonderful building and uh, it's, uh, lots of people talk about it. Uh, I have not heard anybody speak of it in anything but a very positive light. Oh, so, wonderful. So thank you very much. Thank you. I, th I think it's been a home run. Um, it's, it's what I thought it should be uh, over time. I mean, I used to spend a lot of time in Wellesley and Newton at the libraries there and uh, in Metro West sort of public libraries for a lot of different reasons uh, over the years. And we didn't have that. And now we have it. And it is, it, it's, it's, it's a great library. It's as good as any library I've ever seen in Metro West, Mass and, you know, Massachusetts and its education expectations and everything. Uh, I think it's great. Uh, I think the building is awesome. But more importantly, and a couple of my colleagues touched on it, it's you, Heather, and it's your staff that is making this thing work the way it works so well. Um, physical space is nice, but it, the attitude, the culture, the, 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 the personality of the show, the business, is you and your team. And I think that's, you know, you guys deserve an awful lot of the credit for what's going on in there. But I think we, as a community, with your team, have hit this thing out of the park. So keep at it. Absolutely. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Well, we're very pleased you came and gave us this update. Uh, not that we didn't know all the good things going on. All you have to do is go in there and it, it's just, it just speaks for itself. But thank you so much for all you've done. We're, we're just delighted with, the, as someone said, the home run that that library is for us. Thank you. Thank you, Heather. You we'll see you thanks. in there soon. Absolutely. <laughs> Especially open till nine. That's, that's gonna be real helpful. Yep, we will promote it. Excellent. Well, uh, on a less exciting but more expensive note, um, I see Mr. Connolly, uh, Mr. Uh, Connolly is here. Uh, our next agenda item is a bond anticipation note, and the Board of Selectmen will consider approving 
a bond anticipation note in the amount of $2,600,000. Mr. Connolly, welcome. Tell us. Good evening, everyone. Spending it's all great this money to be here. on. Yes, I'm back again to borrow some money. Um, this is a bond anticipation note. Uh, if you remember back in June, we, we actually uh, we, we did a six-month uh, ban. So part of, this, part of this money here is, is from that note that we did back in June. Yeah. It was a six-month note. So we're just renewing part of that, which is $2.36 million, $2 million And then we have new issues. Uh, of 165,000 and 75,000, a total of 240,000 new issue. Um, it's broken down on the memorandum. I also attached, there's uh, a note on the back here that, that breaks everything down on, on uh, what we were borrowing. Actually, it, it should be in your packages. I know I made a copy of it for myself. Here it is. So this. This form here breaks everything down. It shows exactly what we're borrowing. So this is a standard operating procedure. These are for projects that are happening within the town. As you can see, a part of the money is still related to the library con construction, middle school auditorium, uh, the Grove Street water tank. That's money that we're just rolling over. And then uh, school technology and school improvements. And this is going to be a one year. It's a temporary borrowing for 12 months. And um, probably what will happen sometime in the springtime, because there are continuing projects that are happening as we speak, where money is going to be spent. So before the end of the fiscal year, I'll be back again in the springtime to do another bond anticipation note, which again is temporary borrowing, which will bring us through the fiscal year. So the plan is not to have any permanent borrowing within FY 2019. So I know when I first came here, I think my first two weeks here, we had a bond um, in May of 16, and then we had another one in uh, December, then another, I think I had three bonds in 18 months. So, um, so the plan was to try to just do uh, temporary borrowing this fiscal year. And sometime in the fall of, of 2019, which would be FY20, we'll, we'll do another bond, depending on what's happening with the different projects that are happening right now. Okay. Questions from the board? Anyone? We good? Okay. All right. In that case, I request a motion to approve the sale of $2,600,000 uh, at 2.5% general obligation bond anticipation note of the town dated December 12, 2018 and payable December 12, 2018 to Eastern Bank at par. Moved. Second. All right. Moved by Mr. Cotino, seconded by Mr. Ted Stone. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 And opposed, that is unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you Mr. very much. Connelly. Have a good night. Set. Thanks a lot. Thank Thank you. Good night. Too. See you. Thank you. Good night. All right. Next up are annual license renewals. The Board of Selectmen will consider renewing or approving active business licenses to the Town of Hopkinton, including all alcohol, common vigiler, class one and class two livery limousine licenses, entertainment and municipal street license for the calendar year 2019. And we have quite a number of them. Uh, which I guess we should probably take individually. Um, I know that in our packet earlier there were a lot of items that were still outstanding, but I'm hoping that some of these may have had their inspections done. I see the fire chief is here to answer some questions on that. So why don't we take them one at a time here. Um, one just through the one with no Is this right? One just approve all the ones with no contingencies and then just go over the ones with contingencies? I'm good with that. What's that? I'm sorry. Can we approve them? Can we approve the ones with no contingencies? Yeah. And then, and then carve out the other ones? 
Okay. Does everybody else think uh, yeah. the, all the pros think they can Yes, as, as long as you are working on the list that's updated December 4th, 2018. This list right here. Yes. Mm -hmm. the one that that's the one that was on the desk, on the yeah. desk tonight. Yes. Okay. Quite a bit has changed from the agenda that was sent out on Friday till today. Wow. So. Some has. Um, okay. All right, in that case, uh, shall we first just ask for a motion to approve all the license applications that do not have any outstanding contingencies? Would that be appropriate? So would that, and what would we that say that would be from E through well, there's, there's a number of different categories here. a lot here. of letters and numbers. Tell you what, why don't we go through each category? Why don't we do all alcohol beverages and do all those that are no contingencies in that category first? Oh, that's what I meant to yes. Okay, so, so, so category one is all alcoholic beverages. And... 138.12. Let's that, see. That would, e through K. that would be E one ten grill, F Carbones, G Central Public House, D Cornell's, uh, I Dynasty, J Hopkinton Country Club, okay. K Pan Thai. So all those. So moved. Second. So okay. I think we have to nail that motion a little bit more accurately. All right, so let's see. I request a motion to renew the licenses for. I read them again. No, I don't think you have to. Yeah. yeah. Re yes. This can yes. Be read them. Okay. Yeah. May simply re reference the MGL reference MGL chapter one twenty eight section twelve alcoholic beverages. Okay, uh, I request a motion to renew the licenses under Mass General Law Chapter 138.812, all alcoholic beverages for, now you feel I, sh I should read off each one that I mentioned, Mr. Kamala? I think it's the name, yeah. The names, okay. And those are for uh, 110 Grill, Carboni's Restaurant, Central Public House, Cornell's Irish Pub, Dynasty Restaurant, Hopkinton Country Club, and Pan Pantai Restaurant. Madam Chair, I move the motion as stated with the addition of as presented this evening in the document dated December 4th, 2018. Correct. All right. Because there's other stuff in there, right, about yeah. boxes and things and like I'll, that. And, I'll, and I'll, I'll second that with those standards. Okay. Moved and seconded for the, al the al all alcohol beverage licenses, as, as stated, those that do not have any contingencies. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed, that is unanimous. Um, let's go through to the next group with no contingencies. The next group under... Mass General Law, Chapter 138, Section 19C, Farmer's Market Pouring Permit. Uh, no contingencies are for Startline Brewing Company. I request a motion to approve the uh, license for Startline Brewing Company. So moved. Second. All right. Moved and seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Oppose. That is unanimous. Uh, let's see. Item 3, under Mass General Law, Chapter 138, uh, Section 812 wine and malt beverages, no contingencies, uh, the approval for the license for the spoon. I'm sorry, Madam Chair, we got to go back. Okay. We have other licenses under start line besides the farmer's brewing pouring permit. There's an entertainment license for okay. televisions and things like that. So I would just add to that motion that we just voted that same clause that said as presented in the document December 4, 2018. Okay. That thing will cover us for those licenses. All right, so you're going to amend the motion to say as presented in the so, document. So there's a friendly amendment to that last motion that we voted. Okay, is there a second to Mr. Mr. Herr's amendment? All right. Uh, uh, all those in favor of the uh, amended motion, please say aye. 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 And opposed? Okay. Sorry. That is unanimous. Thank you. Thank you for pointing that out. Okay, item three, Mass General Law, Chapter 138, 812, Wine and Malt Beverages. Uh, okay, this is just coming. 
so there's entertainment on this one as yes, well. So, so I make that same motion as as presented. In as the presented document. for the spoon. For the spoon. Okay. All right. May, motion clarity, made. Clarity. It's uh, chapter one thirty eight, section twelve. Mm. Not Form. 812. Um, that, that little thing means section. Yep. <laughs> it has to do with having the right glasses on. It looked like yeah, an I eight. <laughs> now I see. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah, so, the on the board. thank no. Well, <laughs> need stronger glasses is my problem. <laughs> okay. So that motion has been made uh, and seconded. Okay. Yes. Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. That's item three. Item four, under Mass General Law. I don't think so. Oh, no, 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 that has outstanding. We're going to go, we're going to go on to number five, under Mass General Law, chapter 38, section 15, package store, all alcohol beverages. Uh, for Old Town Liquors. And for Hopkinton Wine and Spirits, and for Marty's Liquors. Um, those are all yep. just al alcohol, nothing else. Okay, is there a motion so to approve moved. these? So, second. All right, M motion made and seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 And opposed, unanimous on item five. <coughs> Item six, under Mass General Law, Chapter 138, Section 15, Package Store, Wine and Malt Beverages. There are no contingencies on the VIN bin, and there are no contingencies on Hopkinton Mobile. If I may, through the chair, the only point I wonder about the Hopkinton Mobile is, aren't they going to be tearing that down mid-year? What happens to that? Do they I have to reapply for the new for the new facility? Okay, just wanted to check on that. Yeah, and I think yes. Okay, so okay, so right now both of those have no contingencies, so they're um, ready to be permitted. Is there a motion to approve the VIN moved. bin and okay, Second. all right, moved and seconded for the VIN bin and Hopkinton Mobile. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 And opposed, that is unanimous. Seven, under item seven, Mass General Law, Chapter 140, Section 2, Common Vittler License, and there are some that have no contingencies. Um, Dunkin' Donuts at 78 West Main Street, Dunkin' Donuts at 76 South Street, The Muffin House, The Spoonery, uh, which will also include an entertainment license, so it shall be uh, as, as written, updated uh, in the updated December 4 document. Uh, the Subway, Starbucks Coffee, which includes an entertainment for recorded music, so as written in the amended document. And the uh, Starbucks doing doing business at Starbucks at the Price Chopper in Hopkinton. So moved. Okay. Second. As written in the document. All right. Moved. Question. Mr. Her. So for the spoon, did we do the spoon already in another one for the other? Is, well, that's the ice, ice cream, cream store. This is the spoonery, but did we do the spoon yet? <coughs> yes. Yes. yes so that's we did that, and that was good. That yeah. was the okay. first one. That was one of the first right. ones. Got it. Thank okay, you. so we are doing them for items F, F through L, H I J K, F through L. Okay, yes. all right. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed. That is unanimous. And under item eight, Mass General Law, Chapter One Hundred and Forty, Section Fifty Nine, License for Purchase and Sale of Motor Vehicles. Um, village service centers doing business as Hopkinton Auto Sales has no contingencies. Main Street Service Center, no contingencies. Whitehall Auto Sales, 
WSAB Enterprises and the Vermeer Northeast on South Street. All these have... So moved is written in the document. Okay, those will be items, items B, B through F. Been moved, is there a second? Second. All right, moved and seconded. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed, that's unanimous. Okay. And item nine, under Mass General Law, chapter 159, a section one municipal street license, the Metro West Transit Authority doing business as the lift. Public transportation bus service. Is there a motion so to moved. approve? Moved. Is as there a second? The, as written in the document. Written in the document. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Madam Mo Chair. Mr. Her. Mr. Kamal, you don't see a conflict with me voting on this, do you? No conflict. Thank you. Okay. All right, moved and seconded for the lift. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 And opposed, that's unanimous. Item 10, Town of Hopkinton's Library License Regulations, Livery License. This is Able Limousine, full service chauffeured car service. So moved, this is written in the document. Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 And opposed, that is unanimous. On number 10, um, so now these, Mr. Kamal, these two not renewing closed for business. So one is no contingencies and one is outstanding. Do we have to take any action if they're, whoa. What, they're closed. No, they're closed? Yeah. What? No action needed on those. Okay. No action. No action. Okay. So. Now, there are a number of these here that have outstanding issues. Um, we going to go back to the beginning? Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll just make a motion that we hold off until the 18th, until they, until they come back with stuff, because otherwise, what's going to be discussed? That's all we can do for now. Yeah, so I'll make a motion that we hold off on these. Do we, I don't even have to make a motion. Right. So just, to, just for clarification, are all of these issues that, so what is the, so for example, Hopkins and Swim and Ten, uh, Tennis and Swim Club, what is the 18th going to do? Hopefully they'll have their ducks in why a do we? Why do we have to wait for, for the uh, Hopkins and Tennis and Swim Club? Um, why do we even? Uh, Why isn't that one on the list to be approved? Yeah, because it's, it doesn't even it's exist. Done. No. Because it's got a liquor license. Yeah. Um, in fact, the board may act on that one tonight. Yeah. yeah. There's nothing yes. to do there. Yeah. Right. Board may act on that license tonight. Uh, again, the APC, APCC has instructed the town to approve the license. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Well, well, that one says retaining while complete, no active permits, so. I'll make a motion to approve, as written in the document. Second. So we're making a motion to approve Hopkinton Tennis and Swim Club under Mass General Law 38, 138, Section 12. Mm -hmm. I just question, I mean, what are, what are we voting on? I mean, isn't there... It's we're voting, I think we're voting to maintain their liquor license. But um, there's nothing there. Well, they're, they're, they haven't built the structure yet. Do but they pay? Have they paid? I can check quickly. Do you pay for a yeah. license you don't even use? Yeah, you, you do. do. Yeah, they have wow. to pay. That's nice. But for the when you apply for a liquor license, you you, you, know, you have to show your floor, floor plans, you have yeah. to show they your... Have. your we build, they have. Uh, yeah. They have, yep. okay. Yep, they've done so it. So everything well. is like um, proposed, nothing has been yep. built, yep. and we're voting on allowing them to have a license once they open. Right. So, okay. so with the applicant here, uh, I had a long discussion with the applicant mm -hmm. um, months ago. And so he's ready to go and he's ready to build this facility, but he has hundreds of employees that work for him. And he's, uh, he's a seasonal, um, mm -hmm. he owns a, a, a company that sells lawnmowers and, and uh, snowblowers and things like that. 
Um, and he's a, he's a very big distributor of that. He could build it, but with the recent droughts and the lack of snow that has hit his retail business, um, you know, the, the downfall to his retail business, he could build it, but he didn't want to jeopardize the incomes and occupations of all these people that work for him to overextend himself. Mm -hmm. So I had a very long conversation with him, and, and it was a very amicable, um, like, the reason that he hasn't, like, completed this yet was very much, uh, it definitely hit my heart as far as he's looking out for the employees that he has working for him. Mm -hmm. So uh, I back this, this, uh, this 100,000 percent. There's, this guy is in it for the right reason. He's a Hopkins resident, and um, I, uh, I, I will back this 1,000 percent for, for what this applicant is, is up for. So just to be clear, Mr. Camaro, even though there is really no existing facility, we are in a position where we could approve a license for this facility. Correct. And in fact, that instruction came straight from the ABCC. Okay. All right. Then let's go back and on item four, under Mass General Law, Chapter 138, Section 12, General On-Premises, Hoppington Tennis and Swim Club. Is there a motion there to approve? There is a motion and a second. Approve. Okay. And it's open seconded. Okay. All right, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, that is unanimous. So he doesn't use up any town resources. Right. It's a question like that at this point. Um, yeah. Just a question going back under the first, the first item, number D, under co-restaurant. This said the building department reinspection was scheduled for 12-4, so do we know, we don't have any update as to how that turned out? There is still outstanding. There's still outstanding, okay. All right, then it looks like we've approved everything we can. Beautiful. Um, have we? Um, so I guess I by question. By not voting. Wait, on, sorry. Go ahead. Mr. Go ahead. No, Mr. Nasser. Okay, so Mr. Nasser. So by Nasser. not voting on, on these items, their licenses are not, there's no timelines where uh, uh, the renewal be, would, would expire? Uh, the next Board of Selectmen meeting is December 18th. Mm -hmm. They have until the end of the calendar year to complete the renewal process. Okay. Mr. Tedstone, did you have a question? Um, no. So, so the reason that we're not voting these other ones are because of just we're, they have another couple of weeks to get in compliance. Yes, and in fact, they they are all except for one. They're all. Um, engaged in active conversations with the inspections teams. Okay. Yeah. And we think reasonably that these places can get these things worked out in the next two weeks. Well, it's up we, to them. We hope so. So do we reasonably think that we can get these things can get worked out in the next two weeks? Y yes. Uh, for, for example, one of them we're looking at uh, the door lock type. Uh, in fact, it's a couple issues, a couple of them which couple uh, applicants who have door lock issues. Um, um, one, we have not received a response yet. Uh, and then the other issue relates to lighting and the nitrogen tank. Okay. But across the, all the different licenses that are in the packet, have we had contact with all these folks that have not submitted an application that may not have been aware that it was time? Yeah. We have sent contact to all of the applicants. We have received and are actively engaged in conversations with all except one. Who was that one? Uh, I don't believe it's fair for the, the so, Okay, so how are we gonna resolve that one? I don't want to see somebody I, lose their license. Yes, I, I will call them directly. Okay. Yes. I, I mean, I know that it's their responsibility to maintain their license, it, but we wanna yeah, help them. Chance. That was my question too. Some of the ones that say no, no application right. and no application fee, just as long as we know that we've been reaching out to them, so they've been notified. I think up. it says it in the packet. Who we're waiting on a response from? Well, there's a number of them, and the fees. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we've done as much as we can for now, and we'll still know that the next the next meeting is there. Now, as I understand it, Mr. Kamalo. If they didn't get this done, the alcohol licenses, if they don't do it by the end of December, 
they're on a one-year cycle, right? But the other ones that are non-alcohol license, they would not be licensed to operate, but they could if they came in late, like just the regular that's not an alcohol license. Yeah, we ran into that issue last year where there was a company that, yeah. we don't want to get into it, but may or may not have used to have been called EMC, didn't get their stuff in in time, but they came in a little bit later and got it approved. But not not the alcohol. Yeah. Again, I, th I think the message is we are working diligently with all the parties. Yeah. We are hoping that the community continues to benefit from these bene businesses without any interruption, and we are encouraging them to complete the process before December 31st. Absolutely. Yeah, I guess my only point would be, and I think we've made it, just because they don't know and don't submit doesn't mean we're just going to like turn a blind eye and let them fail. We don't want them no. to fail in this right. process, no. right? Okay. So you're going to reach out and we're going to get it handled. Yeah. Good. Okay. All right. Then we've done as much as we can on that. And oh, right on. town meeting article discussion. The Board of Slepon will discuss its own potential 2019 annual town meeting articles, including general bylaw amendments. Um, do board members have items they'd like to add? Mr. Kamalo, do you have some things that we are looking at? Yeah. Um by way of introduction, we always at this time of the year invite the board members to suggest any articles that we could pursue at the um, 2019 annual town meeting. Um, the board is going to have more opportunities to do that. Today is not the end of, mm -hmm. of the window for you to do so. Um, one article that comes to mind is the one that relates, and we've tried this, uh, we've tried this several years, is the one that relates to the town's ability uh, to perform work on private ways. Uh, there's a statute that the town needs to adopt. However, the process leading to uh, that article appearing on town meeting requires us to receive 200 signatures. Um, we as staff do not have the mechanism to, to collect 200 signatures from town residents. Uh, there needs to be a town resident who will spearhead that process. Just so I understand, do you mean 200 signatures? I missed a piece of that. I apologize. 200 signatures to perform the work or 200 signatures to get this, move this, an article? Bylaw. Bylaw. Yeah, to move the bylaw to town meeting. We, what we found out, uh, this was about perhaps four years ago, is that uh, the town is performing work on private ways without the appropriate authorization per state law. <laughs> if I may, to the chair. Is so, but Sorry. isn't the Board of Selectmen allowed to put articles on without 200 no, signatures? Not this one. Okay. So you're this one is strictly by petition. So, Mr. Kamala, you're speaking of like a, a, a private road that the town may or may not maintain. Yeah. And plow. And plow. Yeah. And do all kinds of other stuff. Well, that was and kind of my question. Is it, is it just plowing or is it? It's also maintenance and repairs. Potholes. Okay. Yeah. So, are you, you're seeing this as a positive for the residents if we were allowed to do that? Correct. So, I mean, sometimes, you know, when you do signature drives for a campaign or whatever, you split it up and different people are willing to each try to get a few signatures. I'm just, I'm wondering if, you know, individual members could, could go out and try to get some, I mean, if you can present it correctly that it's a plus for, for residents, do you think this would be a hard sell? Is it more just the manpower of people who are willing to go out and get these, or do you think this would be a hard sell? I think the two issues, one is the mechanism, uh, how do you get this started? Uh, I think we, we have not found a spark plug to, 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 to initiate the but process. But is it considered a political can, activity? Can, can, can I back this yeah, can I back signatures this are a political activity, we can't do that in a formal capacity. So are we asking, are we asking the residents to give us retroactive permission and, um, and accept the liability of working on, on private roads? We have not asked. If that was passed, yes, that would be the effect. Because 
what if there are people out there that say they don't want to pay the money to, and this could open up the, open up the Pandora's box that we, we end up stopping working on private roads because of this? In, in fact, that was a concern expressed previously. Um, other communities I've worked for also, when this issue has come up, it's, it's never passed a town meeting. <laughs> So we have to get signatures to put something on the ballot that's never passed anywhere else. <laughs> Something's wrong with this picture. <laughs> wow. So when people buy into these uh, private roads, generally they're paying into a homeowners association that has the, has the obligation to maintain their own roads, correct? That's one of the options. There are yeah, many other options. certain cases, yeah. but we've got lots of roads in town that have been private over that don't have homeowners associations that we've hmm. But are we opening a Pandora's box for then people to start demanding town services when heretofore one of the one of the ways we protected ourselves from all these added costs was saying it's a private road you're going to be responsible, it's you know not going to be added to the town inventory. In fact, um, by by way of background, uh, the town or the board looked at this issue about four or five years ago extensively identified different buckets or different classes of roads that the town could act upon. Um, the, the board, through town meeting, acted on most of the options that were available. The only one remaining was this one where clearly there is work that the town is performing in some private ways. And we, <clears throat> as a community, I think as a board, they decided to find a way to at least regularize that, make, make that comply with the laws. However, the mechanism for getting there is exactly what I described before, and that's why no action has been taken. However, for the most part, the town did act on the other options that were identified. So how about if you had a petition, and you had some intro that explained what it was and why we needed to do this, and you had it available at, say, the town clerk's office, and you put it up in the news, the, any residents who are interested in moving this forward, sign the petition, it's available at the town clerk. There's an awful lot of people that come to the town clerk's office every day. It could be presented as an option if you'd like to get this on the warrant for discussion. Um, you know, that would be sort of, couldn't you get the signatures that way? Connor's smiling at me in the background. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> just, just put it out there. Are we allowed to do something like that? on town property, like use town resources on town property to do that? Just a piece of paper, do you want to sign I the petition to put it on the warrant? Well, I, I, again, if the chair, may I take Hurst this back, up, to, papers to back up one more level, as opposed to getting into the issue of how to getting this thing signed. Well, I want to know, be the problem. I want to, I want to first find out, you know, we spent the last few years trying to accept as many town roads as possible. Mm -hmm. You know, and, 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 and the properties you're speaking of in a, in a position that, that there's no way the town can accept these as town roads in the future? Yeah, th this includes a grouping of roads or parcels that did not fall into the brackets that the town already has worked on. So is there a mechanism that we might be able to get these to fit into a bracket so that we can avoid this public-private partnership that looks like we're trying to get into that's never passed another town. <laughs> when we looked at this issue previously, this was the only viable option. But if it's if to, to the chair, if I may be concerned, no, no, no. But if it hasn't passed any other town, then why are we going to do an effort that uh, that's not going to pass a town meeting? Anyway. Yeah. I, I, again, my my comment was. Uh, it has not passed in the towns that I worked for previously. I don't know if it has passed in other towns that I have not worked for. May I ask, do you have a sense of why it didn't pass, what the sticking point was? What was what the problem with it? Clearly it was um, the expense and assuming the liability. Uh-huh. Gotcha. Two, I would say, somewhat valid reasons. Yeah. <laughs> Wow. So I'm pretty sure that I do not want to spearhead that movement. How's that? I think based on 
the feedback I'm receiving from the board, this this is not going to be on the list that the board may discuss next at, at your next meeting. It's not going to be on the list. Yes. I don't see the. I don't see why we need it. Yeah. I think we've taken a lot of steps in the last few years to get some of these things under control that were very yeah. random in the past. Yeah. 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 Um, you and Elaine, you've done it with the planning board, and you've done a great job at uh, accepting so many roads that that were uh, lost in the mix for so many years. And I think we've done a great job. Um, is there any way of getting a list of these properties? Can you get a list to the board just so we can see what they are at some point? Y yes, we will. In fact, uh, for the benefit of uh, members who are not on the board four or five years ago, we will send the complete history of good. this topic. That'd be good. Uh, no, I, I have one that. Oh, I'm sorry. I was going to change Sorry. Um, just last thought on this. Is the reason that we would want to do this because of liability issues where we are already maintaining their roads and without authority? And if, I don't know, someone got hurt, the town would be responsible? I mean, is, I'm just trying to think, I'm trying to understand the logic as to why, if they're not asking, if they're not petitioning us, why are we bothering? And I don't mean to be facetious in that. I mean, no, yeah. I think the decision made previously was based on the fact that the residents already enjoy this benefit from the town. Mm -hmm. And pulling it away, which is the other alternative, pulling it away was not um, um, something that the the board back then found uh, advantageous to the community. Mm -hmm. So the only alternative, therefore, was to make this comply with the law. This meaning the fact that the town is already performing work on some of the streets or parcels. So it almost sounds as though it's like, like, like cleanup work. Like we, we need to clean up our own paperwork in order to continue doing what we're doing. But you mentioned pulling it away, so are you saying that we've come to a point where we're feeling that in these areas where we've been doing the work already, in order to protect ourselves, we should, unless we can find a way to make this legal, we should pull it away, we should stop providing those services that we have been? That issue was discussed. The board then felt that was not a, an option they would pursue. But through the chair, wouldn't be that what, what Mr. Nasrul and I were discussing it earlier? Wouldn't that be one way of getting that 200 signatures? Yeah. <laughs> you know, it, it, because oh, we have to put it out to the to the to the people. See, but one of the things that worries me about this is, unless it's limited to just a few pieces of property, what's going to stop people from that have very 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 long driveways? from saying to the town, you know, I've got a really long driveway and I've got an elderly parent or parents that live here and uh, if, if I need to need a fire truck to get down here, um, you do it for another private way, why don't you do it for my 700 foot driveway? Hmm. That's one of the it's private ways. Mm. Hmm? Elaine, so, would this have anything to do with uh, like a paper road? Existence, but there again, it depends. Be careful. This one, this, this is this council. Yeah, I'd like to see a, a list of the streets <laughs> that were in discussion or, or that are in question uh, before I ask any more questions. This is the only kind of liability I can imagine here. Is, let's say we stop service and pothole develops, car blows a tire, someone gets hurt and says, hey town, you've been, you've been doing this in the past. A pattern. And so now yeah, it, it's, as good as, it's as good as a town road. And I mean, does it open us up to liability? Potentially, I mean, it opens us up to a potential lawsuit. But, um, and I'm just trying to think of like, why would we want to go about doing this? Uh, <clears throat> what, jump, what jumps out at me is that, I don't know, we're probably not supposed to say the street, but there was a street in Woodville that was a, a, a long, drawn-out 
lawsuit. Is, 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 uh, is this something in, uh, is this something similar to that, that lawsuit that we had in Woodville uh, against the town that, uh, that could be avoided or that would, would uh, promote more loss? Like, I'm trying to, I'm trying to kind of wrap my head around this whole concept and the only thing that's jumping out to me in my mind in recent events in the last 30 years is this, uh, this street on Woodville that had that long lawsuit drawn out. Uh, I imagine this is one of the streets that's in that roster. And you know, that's why I, I'd like to kind of kind of table it. And my, personally, I'd like to table it myself and kind of find out a little bit more about it. In, in fact, what was interesting regarding if, if we're talking about the same street, what was interesting about that street was that it, it, it initially was in the, in the category of streets that the town was going to move forward to town meeting. However, uh, one of the residents decided to, to sue the town, and that's how it came, came off the list. Mm -hmm. Do we have any other items that are well, we're I, kind I, of planning right now? I, I brought Mr. up Tino? last week. Okay. Um, that is the, uh, it came up on um, Zach for, uh, I think you might be able to explain it better. The, the regulating of um, wheeled, vehicle, oh, actually, wheeled uh, vehicles that, uh, Global vendors, I guess. Uh, oh, food trucks. Well, it's oh. more than food trucks. It's um, it's uh, mobile pet washing. Um, there was a uh, mobile knit removal. Um, there was there was several other uh, mobile businesses that were coming in, and so the uh, uh, municipal inspections director came in and uh, asked us to look into it. But Zach, but then realized that it should be a general bylaw mm -hmm. as opposed to a zoning bylaw, and so I'm going to defer to uh, operations person have Elaine do a better explanation. Thank you. Yeah. So I think yeah. our uh, director of municipal inspections yeah. and uh, <laughs> so assistant good. have proposed to the town look into regulating mobile food vendors and other mobile vendors, which would be by general bylaw. And um, that would involve a licensing procedure, and so that would be a general bylaw. And so when it went to Zach, I believe the discussion was around um, looking into it and perhaps forming a study group to look at this, and not necessarily maybe for this town meeting, but for a future town meeting, but sitting down and forming a group to study the issue. Yeah, in, in, if I may, um, having worked in this profession for over 30 years uh, and having uh, worked in uh, different parts of the world, um, I've always felt that one way we can, as, as government institutions, support uh, the emergency of good, strong businesses is to allow some form of informal sector uh, and, and, and over-regulation at times stifles those opportunities and therefore I think the suggestion that perhaps a study committee be put in place to really look at um, uh, this issue and then report to different town boards on, 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 on the way forward would be the way to go. Uh, I, I'm not so sure if this is ready for prime time. But, but this is uh, to the chair. Yeah, that, that, it, this was, and I don't think that it could be done before this year's town meeting because it only came up uh, at uh, at Zach last week, and Zach hasn't had a chance to look at it at all. So um, uh, this will probably be uh, another uh, 14 months or 15 months away. Could be. We have uh, compiled a list of bylaws in other communities, so there are things to review. 
I would assume that any kind of mobile business that sells food, there has to be certain for the health, health inspections, health compliance, regardless of whether you're brick and mortar, you're on wheels. Yeah. But we had a park, hours of, hours of, 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 of operation, that kind of stuff. You know, this, that, that's where the, you know, mm -hmm. the use of the roads, and that's why mm -hmm. uh, uh, the uh, Board of Selectmen come into it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then, and then the general bylaw, because a zoning bylaw, everything would be grandfathered that exists, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, we all set for now, so it's it's an open it's an open agenda item. As board members have other things we want to discuss, we can bring it up at another meeting. Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. Then moving on, uh, we have the town manager's report. Mr. Kamalo, uh, capital requests. Um, through the chair, one of the one of the feedback that I've received from the board in prior years regarding the budget processes um, for us to continuously find ways to make information available to the board earlier rather than later. Therefore, the inclusion of the FY20 capital requests uh, on tonight's uh, agenda is strictly to put this information in your heads. We're not looking for a discussion. I just wanted to make sure that we get this information over to the board and that the public is also he has also access to the information via the website. Okay. All right. Good. Okay. Liaison reports and board invites. Are there any? Mr. Nazrula, do you have anything? I have none. Well, uh, you know? over the last, uh, I don't know if it's, if it's uh, liaison reports, uh, there were two great uh, events that uh, shopping for a cause last Sunday and also the uh, menorah lighting on the gazebo. Um, one, one little glitch with the gazebo was that we weren't able to get the, the lights on. Oh no! And so we have to. Uh, Mr. Kamala promised to uh, help me uh, learn how to do that in the future, and work through the different uh, town organizations that control different parts of it. It's a, it's a lot like uh, being in Jerusalem at the uh, Church of the Holy Sepulchre, that's controlled by seven different uh, Christian sects, and there's still a ladder that's been there since the mid-1800s on the second floor, and they can't move it because uh, nobody can agree on who's gonna pick it up, who's gonna carry it through the window, who's gonna do all that stuff, so it's a lot like uh, municipal government. But uh, it was still a great event, and uh, everybody had a lot of fun. Great, good. Right in. So we had a, um, another one of our elementary school building, marathon school, I guess we can call it marathon school building committee meetings uh, last week. And we are winding that down. Um, we're just kind of dotting, dotting some I's and crossing some T's. Uh, we have lessened the meeting burden from monthly to as needed. Um, and we are uh, significantly, significantly under budget. Um, as the uh, as the project comes to completion. Good. Wow, I have a huge head. <laughs> <laughs> wow, what are you doing, everybody? <laughs> Pan out a little bit. Mr. Herr, anything to add tonight? I have nothing to add. Thank you. Okay. Uh, for me, I know Historic District Commission. Um, some of you may have been aware of the surveys they were doing to explore about expanding the historic district. Uh, I think they're going to be sort of tabling that for now. There was a lot of angst being created by it, and so they're kind of going to go back to the drawing board and, you know, re rethink what what might make sense. But there's nothing there's nothing happening right now or on the horizon on that. Uh, they met last week with Dave Del Torrio about the downtown corridor to make sure that all the historic district issues are addressed up front as they move the project forward so that there's no there's no delays on that. And I just wanted to mention, and I can get input from board members as well, MAPC, that's the Metropolitan Area Planning Council, there's sort of a regional planning uh, group of all the Metro West communities. I'm the Hopkinton representative and they are going to be holding a um, sort of a planning forum tomorrow at Dean College to discuss the future of our region and uh, 
solicit your thoughts about shared opportunities and challenges. I guess the, the Greater Boston uh, Metro Common 2050 Regional Plan is going to be kicking off, and so they're they're looking for input from the Metro West communities on planning objectives going forward into the future for our for our region. Um, you know, transportation, mobility, housing. Um, so you know, if anybody has any any thoughts or ideas about ways that the Metro West region should be should be looking to develop. Um, you know, I, I for one would like to speak to them and, and I've mentioned it before about um, it, it's felt for a number of years to me that MAPC was very focused on housing build, build, build without really listening to the communities they represent and the amount of housing leaves lasting impacts that the communities have to deal with. There's more to it than just, let's build all this stuff. You know, let's provide all this additional housing. Now you've got all the costs and the impacts that go with it. And um, so I, I think they could do a better job of kind of looking at the big picture, if they're really serving those communities, of, of looking to address impacts as well as just promoting, promoting you know, more housing development. Um, that's been one of my, quite frankly, one of the reasons I haven't gone to a lot of the meetings is I've sort of felt like they didn't really represent the concerns of a lot of the communities. They had their own agenda, which is just build more housing. Um, but anyway, I'll, I'll be the skunk and make my, <laughs> make my comments. But anyway, if other board members have, have input, uh, either you know, share it now or send me an email or something to the share, and, and I know there'll be ongoing discussions, but this is sort of the kickoff meeting. So, give some thought to, you know, long range planning needs for the region. So, okay. Uh, if there is nothing more on that, are there any future agenda board items that board members would, uh, would like at a different, at Sorry, another point? I'm sure that's already, um, I'm sure it's already discussed at the MAPC, but <sighs> traffic. Yeah. With housing comes traffic. With yep. People, I mean, yep. Traffic is the, I think, yeah. critical issue for Metro West for mm -hmm. the next 20, 30 years, forever. But it's just getting crazy. Like, it's getting everywhere across the state, though. But traffic is a major problem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which is where, you know, transportation discussions and maybe improved, you know, commuter rail and things that would pull some of those people off the roads might help. Okay, future agenda board items. Does anyone have anything they would like to type tax. add? A carbon yes. tax. There you go. Yeah. Have some riots in the streets. Everybody good for now? Yes, I, I got taken care of last week. It's great. Okay. Well, in that case, then I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. I think we are. All right, motion to adjourn. Maybe All those in favor, much. say aye. 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 Opposed. That's unanimous. Thank you very much. And there is stuff to sign. <laughs>